tonight we've gathered together for a story. In the world of Grey Bobby, this faithful puppy and his sister Betty the Bookworm venture out once more to learn all they can about the God who made them. Let's settle in for another bedtime devotional with Pastor Zach. Spring had sprung and Hinterland Park was buzzing with life. Flowers were in bloom and trees were budding. Grey Bobby and Betty's class were camping at the park that week. Uncle Grey Billy, who was very knowledgeable about camping, had joined them as a chaperone. Listen up now, listen up now. I've spent a great deal of time in these woods. As long as you treat these woods with respect, these woods will treat you with respect. What's that even supposed to mean? How is a forest, you know, just the trees, supposed to treat us with respect? <sighs> I'm stumped. <laughs> Ooh, what a wonderful pun. Perhaps she's a minion in training. A uh, filly minion? Filet mignon? Yeah? <laughs> Did anyone hear that? Hear what? Oh, nothing. Ever since I had that dream about Sylvester Sleuth, I can't quite get that pun maestro guy out of my head. Folly, when I said the woods, I mean everything that lives in the woods. As we all know, there are civilized animals, like you and I. Not sure all of us are civilized. And there are wild animals. If you treat them with care and respect, they will not bother you. But if you do something to bother them, well, they are called wild for a reason. My hair is going to be wild if I don't find a place to plug in my flat iron. Barbara, there's no plugs in the woods. Well, then how am I supposed to use my blow dryer? I think you emit enough hot air already, Yakety. <sighs> we'll make our camp, then you'll have time to explore around the camp before dinner. And then lights out. Everyone paired up with a buddy. Folly Foal was paired up with Brushy, but Folly ended up ditching her and disappeared for about half an hour. When Folly finally returned, Uncle Greybilly gave her a lecture about wandering off alone. Folly just rolled her eyes. Later, around the campfire, the children took turns telling stories. This was Betty's favorite part. As a bookworm, she knew a lot of stories. She told one about a dark night in the woods, appropriately enough. And so, there they were, four kids walking through the forest, when suddenly they heard a loud... <laughs> Wow, Betty, that was a great roar. I didn't do that. Nah, it was probably Bart. He used to love to try to scare us when we had sleepovers. As good as I am with roars, that was not me. Oh my, it's a mama bear. Quick, children, up the ladders to the platforms. In the trees above the campsites were ladders that led to observation platforms. The children quickly made their way up. They were just in time to see a wild bear enter into the camp. The bear sniffed around and let out a roar. But this one didn't sound fierce. It was sad. That's strange. I've never seen the bear do that. It's like she's looking for something. Children, did any of you happen to see a bear's den when you were out on your walk? Nope. Not me, Uncle Greybilly. I saw some foxes, but no, no bears. Ew, no, I did not step foot outside my tent. Me and the boys saw a very large beehive, but no bears. I was too busy looking for wild carrots to notice anything else. One by one, the children explained that they had not seen anything that looked like a bear's den. Then Uncle Greybilly came to Folly. Bear's den? Do they really only have dens? You mean, they don't have garages or sand rooms? <laughs> oh my, more hoots than a hoot owl. <laughs> Seriously? No one hears that? Folly, what did you do? Folly unzipped her large backpack. Inside, there were two tiny bear cubs. Mama! Mama! Folly, do you know how dangerous it is to take a mama bear's cubs? But they look so cute. I just couldn't pair it. <laughs> Such a natural talent. No one's hearing this. You've gotten us into quite a lot of trouble, Folly. Here, I'm throwing you some rope. Tie it around your backpack and I will lower the cubs down to their mother. Uncle Grey Billy threw Folly the rope and she did as she was told. The bear cubs were lowered down to the mama bear. Mama, mama, mama. Who picked up the backpack in her jaws and trudged off into the forest. When they were back down at the campsite, Uncle Greybilly gathered them all for a lecture. 
Listen, Folly, and all of you. I told you that if you respect the woods, they will respect us. As you saw, stealing Mama Bear's cubs is not respecting the woods. Folly, I'm afraid that instead of having a partner, you'll have to be with a group of people. You will now be with Bart, Barbara, and the Wonder Wolves. That's like pouring fuel on a fire! You, Bart, and his kin together, you just get kin, dling, kidling! Anything? Nope, nothing. Doesn't seem my inner pun maestro thought that was a worthy pun. The next day, everyone split up into twos for a hike. Everyone except Folly, Bart, and the Wonder Wolves. Barbara asked to team up with Brushy because she thought it was better to be around Brushy's quills than Folly Foal's foolishness. It was probably one of the wisest choices Barbara ever made. Hey Bart, where was that beehive you saw? Oh, would you like to see it? It is so majestic. These bees are the most famous and rare bees in all of the world. They are the bees knees bees. They are the best. Uh, unless they get mad. Bart and the other Wonder Wolves took Folly to the place that they had found the Bees Knees Mega Hive. They all oohed and aahed at the bees going to and fro, their little legs dangling from their bees knees. But after a while, Folly got bored. Hey, 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 I have an idea. Let's throw rocks at that tree just there on the other side of that hive. The person who throws the most rocks closest to the hive, but without hitting it, wins. Bart's cousins did not like the idea, and they told Bart so. But when Folly dared Bart, Bart's pride got the best of him, and he decided to play along. Me first. Folly threw her first rock. It missed the hive by a few inches. I will beat that with many hands. Don't you mean you will beat that handily? Is this not what I said? Bart launched a rock that was an inch closer to hitting the hive. He celebrated but the other Wonder Wolves looked very worried. What are you worried about, my silly cousins? I have this contest with my hands up. Hands down. He, he meant he'd won the contest hands down. Bart wasn't very good at expressions. Now, kids out there, I need to take a moment to tell you something. Games like this are foolish. And though that's the point of our story, I thought it important to tell you the truth. You should never, ever mess with beehives. Just ask Macaulay Culkin. Yes, well, the truth stings, doesn't it? <laughs> Look, Pun Maestro, you were a fun character in the Sylvester Sleuth story, but you keep hanging around. It's time for you to go. I mean, you aren't even in Grey Bobby's head anymore. What are you even doing here? Oh, I, uh, I just like these Grey Bobby bedtime stories. They're fun, and the puns are on point, and besides, they help me sleep at night. I don't mind if you listen in, but could you just not chime in? Oh, I've heard that advice before. You have? Oh yes, it certainly rings a bell. Get it? Chime in, ring a bell. <laughs> okay, that's enough. We've got to get back to the beehive thing, so buzz off. Well, excuse me. I don't do this Sorry about that, kids. Where were we? Oh yeah. Folly and Bart were throwing rocks at the beehive, which, as I said before, is a very bad and dangerous idea. Folly threw one that was so close to the beehive that it disturbed the bees. They got a bit upset for a moment. Then they calmed down again. Ha! Beat that, Bart! Bart was sweating. Folly's throw had been very close to the hive. He applauded his own German precision, but he didn't know if he could cut it that close. His brothers told him to give up, but then Folly did what she did best. She poked the bear, or, or wolf, or, you know, well, she egged Bart on. What's the matter, Bart? Are you afraid you aren't going to be lucky? Or are you just clucky? Like a big chicken! Buck, 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 buck. Nobody calls me chicken. Nobody! Against the protest of the Wonder Wolves, Bart picked up a rock and threw it. Everyone watched as it flew through the air, curved, and crashed into the beehive. The air exploded with hundreds and thousands of bees knees bees. The children were scared, and they tried to flee. As they ran, they yelled, ooh, ouch, in twos and threes. Hey, stop with the rhyming. Well, you get the idea. The children ran through the woods, the bees in hot pursuit. Ah, the bee just stuck in my snoot. Please stop rhyming. They tripped and tumbled over logs and underbrush until they came to a thick thicket of thorn bushes. 
They were trapped. This is all your fault, Folly. Oh, this is why I don't have friends. Suddenly, a small roar echoed through the clearing. Out from the trees crawled a baby bear. Go away, beast. Aww. See? I told you they were cute. The bees swarmed the baby bear. Ouch, stop stinging me. Oh no, stop them, somebody. Help the babies, the babies. A louder roar echoed through the forest and Mama Bear charged into the clearing and stood next to her cub. Uh-oh, you're in trouble. She looked at the bees. The bees flew away in fear, and Mama Bear took her cub and trudged off back into the trees, leaving Folly and the others alone. Back at the camp, Uncle Greybilly passed out sting ointment to Folly, Bart, and the Wonder Wolves. Well, Folly, looks like you've decided once again not to respect the woods, and once again, the woods struck back. And Bart, I think you would have been better off with a Mama Bear than following Folly and her foolishness. Oh! This reminds me of a proverb I read in that favorite Proverbs book of ours. Proverbs 17, 12. Let a man meet a she-bear robbed of her cubs, rather than a fool in his folly. I get what that means. As dangerous as it is to take a mama bear's cubs, it's even worse to follow after someone who is foolish, because it will get you into serious trouble. Aye, it could have been much worse than this, children. Fools accept theirs. Fools do foolish things because of their pride. I certainly hope you've all learned a very important lesson from this. Yeah, like, foolishness is corroded to the max and always stings you in the end. Well, I guess in Bart's case, in the rear end. <laughs> Literally. Yeah, my caboose is still stinging from the bee stings. <laughs> ah! What did we learn today? We learned that following a fool is dangerous more dangerous than taking a mama bear's cubs away from her. And when we feel like we have to prove ourselves or save face, we must remember, it doesn't matter what everyone else thinks of us. It's more important what Jesus thinks of us. Knowing we are important to Him means that we have nothing to prove. And that keeps us from following fools and keeps us seeking wisdom. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, help us to be content with what you think about us so that we don't try to prove ourselves by following fools. And continue to give us wisdom to know when something is foolishness and then the strength to avoid it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. To dive deeper into the truths of this episode with discussion questions, follow us on social media. You can find us on Instagram at Devotionals. That's Bobby with an E. Now let's quiet our minds and our hearts with a good night song. Now hear the Lord's blessing over you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace. Amen. Hey, Mom and Dad. If you want each week's new devotional automatically sent to your podcast downloads, be sure to subscribe. See you next week. Oh, 
here comes Mama. Mm.